what the heck what's up everyone it's fast and welcome back to another episode of shadow run dragon fall so in the last episode we were uh, trying to get 50,000 or whatever the currency is new yen to pay alice so we can get information on the dragon slayer that's a lot of money so we ended up doing some missions we ended up going to like uh, the sewers and finding some infected people now we're trying to get them sorted out with food and stuff so so in this episode we're just gonna be trying to helping those infected people so we're just gonna hop right into it okay let's try and call dr ezekiel you pick up the comlink receiver, it's a custom job cobbled together from a jumbo of high-end parts. It reminds you of your mission computer, Monica's handiwork. There is a series of staccato clicks as the connection is made. Dr. Ezekiel's voice pours into your ear. It's thick with a blend of irritation and insolence. If you're calling me to beg again, you might as well hang up now. I've been bled by you people for too long now. There are plenty of chop chops and or organ leggers out there who'd pay good money for it. You're not talking to a girl, though. Don't beg. Mm -hmm. Firestorm? Is Kibel tries to hide the surprise in his voice. He doesn't do a very good job. What What are you doing on this line, my friend? I just had a very interesting conversation with some of our long-term customers. I don't know what those things I've told you first on, but they are not customers, they've never paid me a thing for my services, and you have been keeping the Cross Bazaar sewers running dock. Well yes, but I don't know why it's my responsibility to pay them for. He has a point, you signed a contract, I expect you to earn, I'll make it easy for you, if you don't hit doctor please. <coughs> you signed a contract. I expect you to honor it. Contracts don't last forever and you forgive me for saying so far soon, but I can see no good reason to continue honoring this one. My clinic is a business, not a charity. I'm not giving your new friends any more biomaterial unless they pay me for it. Yes, you will. If you don't, I'll reveal a little secret. Okay, what if I offer you offer to play for the food one lump sum right now and you go back to honoring your country? The girls don't have money. Okay. What if I offer to pay for the food? Yeah, that seems like a good... That that could be acceptable. It won't be cheap, mind you, but I'm open to offer. In light of my desire to force a good working relationship with you and the goals past service to the Cross Bazaar, I suppose that I could continue feeding them for, oh say, another post punctuated by a soft punctuating sound. Thousand! <coughs> Thousand million paid up front, here and now, via the comlinks in Pewport. Uh, I've dealt with a lot of street dogs in my time, never heard of that much demand for what you sell. If you want me to sh shell out, you would better quote a lower price. Alright, 600, but no less. Uh, okay, 600, you slide your credit streak in your cred stick into a port set into a database of the comb. A few moments later you heard the distinctive track of machinery clamping down on plastic. There is a low hum and the machine spits your cred stick back out again. Very well, everything seems to be in order. Yes, very nice. Thank you for some you can tell your friends that their feedings will resume within the next day or two. Uh, I will pleasure doing business with you and you. There is a click as SK Bell disconnects the line. Alright. Now that is sorted out. Okay. So the person who was running this was Monica. Now that she's gone, <laughs> you're back. I've spoken with SK Bell. You can expect your regu regularly scheduled feedings to stop again at day any day now. Thank you so much, Topsider. This means more to us than you can know. Okay. The Cross Bazaar. The fresh air of the Cross Bazaar is a welcome relief after your time in the sewers. A cold breeze drifts across the street, carrying with it the smells of food being prepared, cheap alcohol being poured, and fires being lit against cold. The stench of the sewers, however, still lingers in your nose. A bad old factory. After taste, at least the pumps are working again. Sewage will flow into the streets would certainly smell far worse. Alright, alright. Okay, again for karma. My dude, we finished your stuff. 
trick. Finally, I was worried that you wouldn't come back either. So, by the way, your friend. Mm -hmm. So, tell me what happened. Everything okay? He's taken care of. You can leave after I give you my money. What about Victor? Uh, your friend isn't coming. I'm sorry. Chris, poor Vic. I don't know how I'm gonna tell these folks real close to the family they were. I do maintenance manual. A phone is on his body. Maybe you could give it to them. Hey, thanks. <clears throat> Though he turns the money over in his hands, rubs his thumb over the careworn paper cover. I appreciate it. Here's the money, I promise you. Okay, cool. Alright, we gained some karma. Now, thing is, thing is, thing is, what do I boost? Intelligence? I need charisma as well. Okay, intelligence it is. We actually charisma is pretty cool right there. Taking I'm not I'm not gonna boost taking. I could improve my overwatch if not yet unlocked. Okay, cool. Now I got an overwatch. That's awesome. Uh I have two missions. Take the U-Bahn to Fracken Fewer Tor or take the U-Bahn to Sketch Nature or something like that. Uh, I think... Okay, Dietrich. What are you doing here? A lone figure stands in the U-Bahn station. Dietrich, he raises a bottle at your approach and tosses it away. Figure I ran into you here, boss. Wanted to be sure that I caught you before you headed off. Takes deep breath and slowly releases, looks you in the eye. First of all, we need to have a talk about this humanist kick. Uh... What? Beatrice, I'm listening. Well, I've got a history with humanists. I fought him back in 39 during the Night of Rage. What is the Night of Rage? Hell of a thing that was. I remember the terror, the senseless violence, the murdered children. I remember this little dwarf boy. They stuffed his body in the gutter, I assume. I can still see his face all bruised and broken. To this day, it makes my blood boil. Anyway, long story short, we beat him. Berlin's punks and anarchists all came together and we stomped them, leaving Drek out of those racist pigs. Okay, a lot of good people died that night, but we put down some of the bad ones too. Let me guess, you want to come on the humanist run so you can finish the job? That's part of it, sure, but it's not the whole story. I just, I don't want, I don't just want to come on this run, boss. I have to come. It's my nephew, Alexander. He signed uh, on with the humanists, driven to it by his worthless sack over that, no doubt. I take it that his father, your brother, is a humanist number two? Yeah. That uh, take a level of conviction, a quality that truly lacks. My best guess is that he is treating humanists as a boarding school. They feed and house their recruits, and that's money that he'd rather spend on himself, so he dumped his boy off on them, never mind the fact that they're fascist swine. There she looks in the eye. I've gotta get Alexander out of the fast zone before it's too late. Those masters are experts of warping young minds. It's how their disgusting ideology progregates. So I'm asking you as a personal favor to let me come along on the run, I have to get into that compound fast home, I have to find Alexander, I have to turn him around before those animals make him do something unforgivable. Of course, Dietrich, I wouldn't keep you from something like this. Thanks boss, never doubted you would bring me. Of course, you're too good of a man for that, but it's good to hear it all the same. Okay. By the way, can I not upgrade my dudes? Nope. Not even this two. Gain that level two. Gain a level two. Oh, oh interesting, interesting, fascinating. Uh, okay. Nah. Okay. This is what's gonna happen. Dredich, you gotta wait a minute. I'm gonna have to go do this thing first. Then I'll come do this uh, the main mission. Let me do the optional first. Yeah. I want to go into this audition. 
I'm gonna be the only one there, not my team. No, we were a completely different team. As the urban ham stores, the uh, fragrant fire tore your tag ugly at the fabric of your maintenance uniform. You found it in a duffel bag on your seat when you boarded, along with a note from Dewar to put it on before your arrival. The moment you step off this train, the note said, your try and run begins. You are to rendezvous with the rest of your team, reconnoitre the building, and plan the specified devices in Al Shire's suit. Beyond that, your approach will be left to you. You not disappoint us. You are being watched. Okay. All right. These guys. These guys seem pretty dangerous. They know everything about us. Like what? They run in the shadows. <laughs> what the heck? As you emerge from the digging confines of the U-Bahn terminal and step into the light of day, you find yourself confronted by a wall of muscle in a knight errant uniform. Or with maintenance, knight errant grenadier. It isn't a question, it stands impassively waiting for a response. I wouldn't be wearing this uni uniform if I Yes, sir. Uh, have you seen any other main scans around? No, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, they've been trickling in over the last 15 minutes or so. <laughs> yeah, let's just give away my whim. <laughs> I've already done a security check on your entire crew. Everything checked out, so you're good to uh, head on into the building whenever you want. Efficient operation you're running here. It's almost as if you were expecting me. We were. No one gets on or off of that train without us knowing about it. Don't worry, all the correct paperwork has already been filled. You and your crew are good for the next 12 hours. It's good to know that you're so on top of things. We're night errand. Of course we're on top of things. You get what you pay for. And the owners of this building paid for the best. Well, keep up the good work then. No, is it you? Have a good one. Damn. Uh, where can I get an armor like that? Damn, I love it. Looks awesome. Okay. There it is, another mythos. A young dwarf looks up at you, a wide eye with oppression. From the way that she's fidgeting, you can tell that she's terrified. She bites a lower lip, eyes darting from side to side, finally she takes a step toward you. Um, hello, are you Mr. Farson? Yeah, that's me. Am I late? No, you're right on time, but the rest of us got here early and one of the others were pretty vocal about not wanting to wait. He took off and the other guy followed him. They were already inside. Hmm, they charge into the building. You didn't... Okay. Gray. That's just gray. The door frings her hands. I'm sorry. Uh, I told them to wait, but they didn't listen. They just muscled on past me and waltzed uh, through the front door. Wonderful. We got a job to do, and after the team goes running off before I even get here. Alright, calm down. I see that you have a toolbox. Are you a rig or something? Well, um, no, I'm not like you. Not like the others. You should probably know that. Then, what are like you? A normal person with a boyfriend and a cat in a shift department. I'm not a career criminal, is what I'm saying. I'm just an electrician. If you're not a shadow runner, uh, if you're not a shadow runner, why are you doing this crew? Her face flashes red. I'd rather not talk about it. Let's just say that someone did me a favor once and that coming along on this thing is how I have to pay it back. Look, in the end, it doesn't matter. I have to be on this run and you have to bring me along. It's what they want. You at least know how to defend yourself? Well, kind of. I brought my taser and I have a little hold out pistol for self defense. I've done some shooting at the range, but I've never fired a living thing before. Certainly not a best. I'm hoping that we can get through this without me having to. Yeah, well, I'm sure that we'll have things. We'll have things we'd rather be doing now. You said that our demons went inside. Are you certain about that? They were still on the first floor. Nobody's getting up still until I bypass the security locks on the elevator. That's why I decided to wait for you out here. I figured that they couldn't get too far ahead of us if I didn't go inside with them. Good thinking. Thanks. I just hope that they don't screw things up in there. All that I want is to get this thing over with and get back home. Right there with you. I said inside. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. Okay, so you don't know how to fight. What are you doing here? Hmm. 
Okay. Okay. Is it inside? A mid level corporate compound complete with living spaces on the upper levels. Hmm. Security all the way over there. Who is this guy? Hmm. Alright. Enter the complex. Now you don't know how to fight. You're you're not a shadow runner. <laughs> it's crazy, man. They put us with newbies here. Okay, it's our team. As you step through the door, you find yourself confronted by a pair of men wearing the same kind of uniform that you are. Judging by the expression, there is no lo loss between the two. Hearing the door swing open, they turn to face you. The shorter of the two, a human with arcane symbol, stays fully embossed into his belt, glares at you. You a magician or something? You're here, finally, and you bought a little mouse of an electrician with you. Better late than never, but not much better. You're tired enough as it is. He jerks his thumb at the elf standing beside him. I'll leave it to you to keep our pack mule in the line. The elf slips curl into a snarl. Hanging from his back is a bulgy pack that looks incredibly heavy. His broad shoulders sag under the weight of whatever's inside. Okay, he's dumb as a boss, but he can lift everything. This might not be bad in a fight either. At the very least, he can soak up a few bullets for the rest of us. Staring daggers at the mage, he spits out a long string of foreign words in a single, susurrant breath. The sound of it is lovely, but his expression leaves little doubt that the message behind the words is an ugly one. Oh, and I hope that you can speak Sperithiel. He shakes his head in disgust. Damn useless immigrants. Do us all a favor and keep your penis to yourself. Mm. Look, let's just get this over. We're straight to the point. We would have an important meeting in a few hours. So, let's get to the penthouse and plant the cameras. I'll mask them against the station and then we can all go our separate ways. The elf mutters something under his breath and hitches the bulk back, back up a little high on his back. His muscle bulge under the strain of it. Are you sure that the friend here only speaks spiritual? Am I most disappointment? Yes, a Targaryen dialect by the sounds of it. I wish that he'd do us all a favor and go back. Address the elf. Can you understand me at all? The musical tones of the elvish tongue pour out of his mouth again, but you can't make out the word. His dialect is quite foreign. It's unlike the form of Sperryfield spoken by the elves of Tirnanog. The elf falls silent. He looks just as frustrated as the mage is. Matter under your breath. So, Lucas sent me in here with a severe. Okay. Just relax and concentrate on the job. Your words don't seem to have much impact, the skulls deepens. Now that we're all together, let's discuss our crunch. Anyone know how we're supposed to get into a house by a penthouse? Impression that none of you actually want to be. Okay. I do. If you can get me in the building access panel that's on the same circuit as the penthouse, I should be able to put its security system into maintenance mode. The job will take some creative rewiring. Well, that and whatever levers in the pack that the elf is carrying. Our employers gave us every schematics. And do you know where we'll find that access panel mouse? Quit calling me that. She takes a moment to calm herself. And yes, I do. There's an access panel in one of the mid-range apartments on the same floor. My contact gave me a key code that should get us in. You said shoot twice already. That makes me feel uneasy. Well, there's nothing that I can do about that. It's the plan that I was given and we're stuck with it. Unless you have a better idea, we'll just have to follow instructions and hope for the best. Hmm. She turns to face you. Get me to a building access terminal on this floor and I can rewire the elevator. That's the first thing that we need to do. Once we're upstairs, we use the code I was given. I rewire all share security and we hide the cameras in his apartment. Hmm. Well, that's the theory anyway. It just gets better and better. Alrighty. Move out. Get Jana to the utility room. Stressed suit. 
The well dressed orc stops uh, his pacing to stare at you as you approach. Heavy, worry lines edge his forehead and his eyes are bloodshot. He looks like he hasn't slept in a month. I don't want to be rude, but I'm a little, bit, a little busy right now. Walking around the room? That's okay. That's your form of business. If this is about building mentors, take it somewhere else. Watch it. You don't get to talk to me like that. You're aggressive. Like a janitor? Yes, I do, because that's what you are. If you want to keep wearing that uniform, you'd better watch the attitude. Now, isn't there a floor that you could be cleaning or something? I've got a lot of my mind to worry about. Important things. I don't want to be bothered. Uh, you think that just because we're in maintenance, we don't understand what you're going through? I have a 621 beast to file before the day is out, and if I don't, I can kiss my efficiency bonus goodbye. And the visible effort it comes in self. Look, sorry, I'm not trying to be unpleasant, it's just that I have a huge presentation to give to the board in 20 minutes. I started up all night practicing it, and now I'm so tired that I can't even remember my own name. That's right. That's really rough. I'm going to watch this, and the worst part is most of those bastards will assume that it's because I'm an orc. They already make jokes behind my back. After this, it's going to get a lot worse. Nice stuff, man. Best of luck. He scrolls and continues to pace. Alright, alright. Okay, we have a room there. Should I get in there? Okay, more stuff there. Okay, what is this? A boutique food kiosk. The sign out front advise, uh, advertises a variety of local source foodstuffs, all of them terribly overpriced. Take a closer look at the food on offer. Dancing in the self self refrigerated section of the kiosk, you'll find a variety of sandwiches wrapped in the silk plastic. You could eat for a week for the price of one of these things. So, overpriced stuff, huh? Interesting. All right, just getting a feel for the room. Let me see what is um, behind this door. Okay, your security clearance doesn't authorize you to be in here. We're doing a building wide maintenance sweep of all major systems. Want us to take a look at the terminal? Uh, you know that I can't do that. You don't have the appropriate clearance to touch this terminal, let alone service it. Besides, I've been running great since that Adam Inter's team worked on it last week. I'm surprised that you don't have that in your records. You know how it is with us in management. The left hand doesn't know that the right hand is doing. It's ridiculous. Tori my life. You are my sympathies. Uh, well, we'll be on the way then. Take it easy. Okay. Hmm. All right. Let's go into this room here. What is this? What? Uh, Taylor. Okay. Welcome to Dunkley's Fine Clothier. Are you shopping for a suit? A uh, fashion business suit made of ballistic cloth catches your eyes. It would be a simple matter to slide it on your under your baggy maintenance overalls. Let me see the suit. Ah, good choice, talent safety. You have a good eye. She takes your arm. Here, let me show you to a dressing room. 1,500. Ah, I don't have the money. What is this? See that cat in the hallway? Okay, well, he was standing next to a junction box just like this and looks like they're both on the same circuit too. So? So, I could use this one to overload the one that the guard is standing on. She looks at the junction box again and notes. Yeah, I could feed a nice power spike into that one from here. You know, if you wanted me. Mm -hmm. What would that do? Make a loud bang and arc enough voltage into that hallway to knock out a gang of trolls. Okay, uh, we'll find another way past the guard. Fine by me? Okay. Okay, wait. Our objective is to get into this guy. Knight Errant Guard. Can I help you? Yeah, uh, could you open the door? They will tell you how we have some work to do in there. 
Uh, you can't read the guy's expression to his mirrored face, but his body language makes it clear that he's staring at you. This door is security code Delta Great. Your ID says that you're just a theta. So no, I can't open the door. You're listening. We have work to do in there. I hear him loud and clear. Mob Chucky, now you listen to me. Nobody without Delta clearance gets through this door period. I suggest that you talk to management if you really do need to get in here. They will print your clearance, otherwise piss off. Uh, sorry about that, we'll be on our way. Yeah, you do that. Okay, I can use Charisma. Electrical Junction Box. So I can use that one to override that one and fry it. But wouldn't that uh, just get people's attention like crazy corporate woman? Let's see what's in this room. A workroom corporate couple stands in the corner buying racks of pamphlets about urine and enhancement headwear. The woman's head turns at the sound of your approach. Upon seeing your uniform, her nose wrinkles. Oh, hello, are you in your... are we in your way? We wouldn't want to keep you from your way. A spade ten husband chimes in. Right, the last thing we'd want is to come between you people and whatever it is that you do. I'm just browsing. Ah, uh, yeah, we've got some repair work to do. The flex delayed is leaking all around. Real message of believing. How wide is Is that dangerous? We should call security. No need to panic. It is intelligence or origin. Say, what are you looking at there? This, he holds up the display mode that we're inspecting so that you can see it. A small ship along with a glossy, attractive information sheet. It's a pediatric skill wire plus system. For our son, our little hands deserves the very best, and he will need it if he's going to complete it with his classmates at Academy. That means headwear for our men tech. We may not be as rich as the other parents, but this at least is something that we can do. Stuff isn't cheap, you must be very devoted parents. I like to think that we are, and no, it isn't cheap, but unfortunately these sorts of enhancements have become nearly mandatory at top tier schools like the academy. Our son's classmates come from affluent families, even the least successful Hans Pierce has a pediatric encephalon, and it ranges on up from there. The academy grades on a curve. If we were to send Hans to school without any enhancements, we'd be setting him up for failure. What about the kids that can't afford cyber surgery? And scholarship students, you mean? Poses concern. Well, I suppose that someone has to be at the bottom of the pile. Yes, but that someone won't be under arms. It's an unfortunate situation, of course. He goes to his head apologetically. But then, that's the world we live in, isn't it? Yeah. Well, maybe, not mine. It is, and that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Okay, so the rich kids. Get the deck stack when the fever and the kids Yeah. I mean the kids who go to where they are on America yeah, sounds about right. Hmm. Like I said, it's a world we live in. Yeah, it is. You wouldn't want hands to end up at the bottom of the heap like me. I should say not, you seem like a good man and I don't mean to insult you, but you know how cutthroat it is out there. Hans will have an advantage even if I have to mortgage the house provided to it. I speak of you, I should get back to it. Goodbye now. Hmm, so they care about their... Okay, the child. Take Van the woman behind the counter smiles at you, her cheeks, okay? Good afternoon and welcome to Outman Tech, the boutique that makes a better you of you. Her voice is overflowing with for the a cheerfulness. Highly, you wonder how many times she has to give this exact speech every day. Tell me how I can help you today. May I be in the market for some cyberware? Then you've come to the right place. It just is at the time in front of you. Please feel free to browse your our catalog. We have a huge stock of performance enhancing augmentations to make you into the person you always dream you could be. Look at the catalog. Okay. Come on, let me see that catalog. Hey, this area looks interesting. Might if I take a look at it? She glanced at Edmonds. Looking at the new Encephalon. Encephalon, huh? Good choice. Her original supervisor has one. It is amazing. Totally worth the price. And what is the price? It doesn't sell on the screen. I'm doing a special right now. Yours for only 250. 
Mm, yeah, same here. That's wonderful. Good choice. I just swipe a crest stick, then I'll print her purchase order. Okay, where do I get it installed? Is your dog in the back or something? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid that you don't understand. We're a boutique shop, not the cyber surgery clinic. We can sell you the device and have it sent to the clinic of your choice for installation. But we don't do the surgery here. Okay, of course, your doctor will be separate for installation. But this way, you can ensure that the procedure is carried out wherever you're most comfortable. Uh, I will still take it. Please have it sent to the Trich Cyber Clinic in the Cross Bazaar. He swipes your crest stick and punches a few buttons on a PDA. A flimsy slip of paper spills out of the thermal you're standing at and in your hand. The saleswoman beams at you. You are now proud owner of Encelatope Next, who have it sent to the Trich Clinic as per your request. When you arrive, just saw the doctor or a member of his staff the proof of purchase that you're holding and he'll know what to fetch for you. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Alright, alright, alright.